Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast series, Seller Speak. Seller Speak is a platform where we invite Amazon experts from different domains to share their business secrets to help sellers succeed in their Amazon journey. Today, we have Leslie Hensel with us. Well, Leslie is the co-founder of Riverbend Consulting, whose employees solve critical problems and other effective growth strategies for sellers on Amazon and other e-commerce platforms. She has personally helped hundreds of third-party sellers get their suspended Amazon accounts and ASINs back up and running. Today, we'll be discussing everything about Amazon account health rating and how to avoid account suspensions. So let me bring her on the screen. Hey, Leslie, how are you? Welcome to Seller Speak. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. It feels so good to have you on our podcast. And Leslie, how are the boys doing? Oh, they're doing just great. Thank you. I've got two kiddos and right now they are actually home because it's Christmas time here in the States. It is so nice just to have everyone under the same roof. That's wonderful. <laughs> I think a family makes everything so happy, right? So almost for two decades, you have worked as a business consultant and you are an Amazon seller for the past 10 years. How has been your journey so far and how did you overcome the challenges during the initial years of your consultancy and selling on Amazon? You know, selling on Amazon is one challenge after another. And back when I started selling, it was still kind of the Wild West. It was anything goes and people could just list any product. They could buy anything from anywhere. They didn't have to have good invoices. It was crazy. And then over time, I would go to Amazon conferences and events and meet people who would tell me these terrible things that had happened to them, how their, their ASINs had been shut down, their accounts had been shut down. Um, they couldn't get seller support to help them. So my background before I sold on Amazon was actually as a business consultant. So I started using some of those skills to try and help other people. I was fortunate enough, I had never had these specific problems and didn't even know they existed in my account, but I started helping other people to solve it in theirs. Yeah, amazing. I think I must say uh, you are doing a great job and your story is truly going to motivate our viewers today. So also there are so many things I need to discuss with you regarding Amazon account health. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, it is uh, you know, the Amazon account health is a measure of how well your Amazon account is doing in compliance with Amazon's code of conduct. It affects um, many facets of the seller account beyond the risks of suspension. So, Leslie, what, according to you, is the good account health for an Amazon seller? And what are the best ways to ensure staying on top of Amazon account health? So Amazon recently rolled out in the States and in Canada, the account health rating, which is a score. They're going to be rolling this out across the EU and other marketplaces in the coming months. If they haven't already, they might have started to slow roll it out there. So what this rating does, it's a scale from zero to a thousand. And if you're at 200 or better, it says your account is healthy. Now. First of all, I have to say that's a really weird scale, that it goes to 1,000, but 200 is healthy. Well, the reason for that is volume. So if you're a high volume seller, you might be able to get up to that 1,000 mark. If you're a low volume seller, you're never going to get there. Um, you might be very healthy at 200, 300, or 400. But what is misleading here is that they use this color-coded system. And so it is red, yellow, or green. And green just says healthy. And then people think, oh, well, I'm great. It doesn't matter if there are policy violations or ASINs that have problems that they've made me aware of. If I'm green, I'm good to go. Well, that is not really the case. Um, we have several sellers who come to us who are in the green that Amazon has reached out to them and said, you have 72 hours to solve some of these ASIN problems. And if you don't, your account will be suspended. So just being in the green does not mean you can sit back and relax. 
Absolutely. I think maintaining a good account health rating on Amazon is essential for any seller searching for success. For sellers who are watching this, if you are struggling to stay on top of your account health, Leslie's effective ways will surely help you. And, you know, Amazon account health rating is a feature that helps you monitor your Amazon account health in Seller Central. So the three main sections of an Amazon account health rating are customer service performance, policy compliance, and shipping performance. Now, under uh, customer service performance, the order defect rate should be less than 1%. So Leslie, what are your expert strategies to ensure that the ODR is always less than 1%? So on order defect rate, um, that is mostly going to be uh, customer feedback and A to Z claims. Now, sometimes there are also chargebacks, but sellers usually don't interact on chargebacks. That's something Amazon handles itself. Um, so what you need to focus on are A to Z claims and customer feedback. Now, feedback, this is your store feedback. This isn't product ratings or reviews. And on that store feedback, it is really important that you fight against bad feedback. A lot of buyers out there are confused and they think that your store feedback area is a good place to complain that they thought that the shade of blue was not really blue. It was more like green or whatever they want to say about the product that they don't like the product. Um, many things in store feedback will be a product review. Those can be removed if you complain to Amazon. And also, if it's their fault, if it's Amazon's fault. So if you have an FBA product that you that the buyer says it was late um, or it arrived damaged, a lot of times Amazon will strike through that feedback and take it off of your record, which is great. Now, A to Z claims, this is for um, seller fulfilled orders, things that you are shipping out yourself. And it's usually people saying that it wasn't as described, that it um, never arrived, that it was late, uh, whatever the case might be. So the important thing about A to Z claims is to work the A to Z claims. Some people just ignore them and then Amazon eventually will just refund the order and you've got that strike against your account. A lot of times when you talk to buyers, you can work it out with them. So you can show them, actually, it was delivered. Go check with your neighbors. And they're like, oh, oops, yeah, my neighbor has my package. Or you can show them the tracking and they'll back off and say, you're right, I shouldn't have filed a claim. Um, or you can arrange for them to return the item to you, or you can give a partial refund, anything to try and make that go away. Um, but what you don't want to do is just ignore them. So both of these areas, if sellers work them, as long as you're actually a good faith seller shipping the right product, um, there's really no reason you should ever be over that 1% mark. Right, right. Absolutely. I think uh, thank you so much for giving us some best insights on order defect rate, responding to feedback, selling high quality items, perfect packaging, providing appropriate product description, providing timely delivery and packaging will definitely help sellers to improve their ODR, right? And let me tell you, all these can be achieved with Seller App's listing quality score under a product intelligence feature where we can analyze the different aspects of discoverability and desirability of the product too. So Amazon's AHR has been around for a while, but the new account health rating has been revamped in accordance with the feedback from sellers. Yes, that's right. Amazon does listen to sellers. Well, AHR holistic metric is one of the key changes to Amazon's account health rating. Leslie, how is this metric going to benefit sellers? So I'm not sure that it will really benefit sellers, unfortunately, but what it does do is put the focus where sellers need their focus to be. So in the past, um, sellers would have things pop up on their account health scorecard. That's that area, the middle of the account health screen, where it has suspected IP, reported IP, uh, inauthentic, all of the various defects that you can have from Amazon. And so those would, those would be there. People would see the number, but a lot of times they would just ignore them. They wouldn't really focus on them or address them. So where I think that this account health rating does help, a lot of Amazon sellers, they are very focused on data and numbers. 
it assigns a number to you and what your score is, as well as that green, yellow, red bar that's been there a long time, but now there's a number with it. And it shows you, hey, this is having a negative impact on your account. Too many sellers ignore, um, especially ASIN violations. They think if they just delete the ASIN and stop selling it, all of a sudden they're cool. Well, it doesn't really work that way. Amazon looks at your data for the past 180 days. So any defect from the past 180 days is negatively impacting your account. And that can build up over time. So in the past, you had no idea how Amazon was viewing this. You still really don't. Amazon is opaque. They're like a black box. They're not going to tell you the formulas they use to calculate the numbers, but you will be able to see that number fluctuate, which means you can say to yourself, oh yeah, I should probably appeal those ASIN violations instead of just letting them sit there. I think those were some great insights, great inputs, Leslie. It will definitely help sellers get a quick glance at their you know, overall standing and uh, likelihood of suspension. So when it comes to selling on Amazon, it's important to know for sellers how profitable their business is. And, uh, you know, in this case, how can sellers use account health data to improve their profitability? We would like to know about it. Right, because people only see seller performance and account health as negative um, for good reason. It's like the scary screen in the account. It's where you go and you're afraid bad things are going to happen to you and your products. But we like to turn that idea on its head and talk about how you can actually be more profitable by paying attention to your defects. So most of the problems with profitability in an account come from a very small set of products. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't take any time to figure out what those products are. Um, so my favorite strategy to talk about is always be improving your worst ASIN. And a lot of times, the um, account health section of your dashboard, it tells you what your worst ASIN might be. Um, because if people are complaining about inauthentic or condition or expired on a product, then sometimes, yes, it's the buyer. Sometimes they didn't read the expiration date correctly or they're, they're wrong. It is authentic. But other times they have a legitimate reason to complain. I had a seller I was working with who was selling a bundle of shampoo and conditioner. And he kept getting all of these complaints that were in voice of the customer and then started showing up in condition complaints um, that saying, I got two shampoos, I got two shampoos, I got two shampoos. Well, he didn't believe the buyer feedback. So we're talking one day and I'm like, you've really got to believe your buyers. This is not one buyer. There are multiple people saying they got two shampoos instead of a shampoo and a conditioner. So he goes and recalls part of the inventory from FBA. And sure enough, some of them were bundled correctly and some of them were not. So if he had just taken the time to look at his returns data and voice of the customer, he would have avoided a lot more returns. So in Amazon land, returns are so expensive. And here is why. You're not just giving back the money for the product. If you're selling FBA, you're eating the fees. So the referral fee that Amazon charged you, they refund that back to you. That's like the commission that they took on the sale. But the pick and pack fee, you eat that fee. Um, so it, it you're taking a loss on all of those products. It does not take very many returns on an ASIN to be in the red on that ASIN. So here's what I love to ask people to do. Run your returns report. Um, look through voice of the customer, which is very close related to closely related to account health. And then look through account health. Look at all of that data and you can train a VA to do this for you to choose what is your worst ASIN. So your worst ASIN is going to have a high return rate and it's going to have complaints in voice of the customer or complaints that are coming through to that account health dashboard. And then you fix that one ASIN. So there are so many ways to fix an ASIN. A lot of it is actually things that you mentioned earlier, like Fix your listing detail page because people are confused and don't understand what they're buying. Improve your packaging because something is getting broken, it's leaking, 
whatever the case might be. So improving packaging to FBA or improving packaging that you're shipping yourself. Um, and you know, there's there's so many different ways to fix a product all the way to the dreaded, just don't sell that thing anymore because you can't make it better and it's not worth it. Sometimes that is the answer. But if you take the time to work through all the data in your account and always have one ASIN, always be looking for that worst ASIN and fixing it, you will be amazed at how your profitability will change in a short period of time while you're also decreasing risk of any kind of enforcement from Amazon. Yeah, I think uh, many people assume that selling on Amazon is always a profitable business, but there are so many factors on which profitability depends. And thanks to your tips, sellers can use the account health data to boost their profitability. Now, in order to analyze profit margins and other aspects of profit and loss, sellers can always use Seller App Sales Dashboard, and you can always visit our website. Also, account suspension can be an expensive and difficult obstacle to overcome for any type of seller, especially if they are selling internationally. Now, what is your plan of action for the sellers when their accounts are suspended? Can you quote an example where you know you have helped a client in reinstating their account? Absolutely. And you know, there's really at this point in time two kinds of account suspensions going on. There are uh, product quality related suspensions and code of conduct related suspensions. You can still get suspended for late shipping and valid tracking rate. Those don't happen that often, and they're kind of easy to fix. So people don't usually come and pay us for that one because they can do it themselves. They can convince Amazon they're going to ship better, and they're all good. So on product quality suspensions, um, those are for inauthentic condition, expiration, um, and also related to some policies, so things like restricted products. Uh, you could also throw into that bucket intellectual property, which is really tough these days. So when a client comes to us, the first thing we do is look for the root cause. So with product quality, a lot of times that is looking at sales data. It is looking at reports and it is talking to the client about, okay, what are you really doing? How are you really handling these products? How are you sourcing them? Are they good products? Are you sourcing from liquidation? And so the, the quality is bad. Um, is your manufacturer not having quality controls? And then they're shipping straight to the warehouse and things look bad when they get there. So Amazon has three parts to the reinstatement. The first is root cause. So we work with the seller to really ask hard questions about root cause. Amazon doesn't want you to just make something up. They want real answers. Um, part two of the appeal is how you fixed the problem that you had. In other words, like you refunded people who were mad at you. Um, you made sure that those bad ASINs that you figured out, you know, the quality was lousy on all of them, that you pull those out of the warehouse the immediate things that you did to solve the problem. And then part three is always how you will prevent it from happening again. So with product quality, that is around inspection, maybe new packaging, um, new methods of shipping, all of the ideas that you would, you would think of that we've already run through today of making sure that the products actually arrive to the buyer in the brand new condition that they expect. They don't want something that looks like it's been run over by a truck and it has to match the detail page. Now, over on the code of conduct side, that's for policy violations. Amazon has so many policies that people don't realize they have and they get caught in that web. Um, so code of conduct suspensions are a little harder. And with those, a lot of it is figuring out what the seller did. We have a lot of clients who come to us who get suspended for platform manipulation, review manipulation, um, unfair practices toward buyers. The, the Amazon gives these very broad statements and linked accounts where they're linked to an account not allowed to sell on Amazon. And they will honestly say to us, we don't know what we did wrong. We don't think we did anything wrong. They really believe many of them. Um, cause you know, the bad guys don't usually come to us, right? It's the, it's the folks who made a mistake or 
honestly, I have no idea what Amazon's talking about. Um, they really don't understand what happened. Fortunately, we have a big team and a lot of them are ex-Amazon employees who used to do the suspending. So we ask a lot of questions and explain to them all of these behaviors that they thought were innocent that can get you in trouble with Amazon. So we go over all the rules, explain what they did, or even explain what Amazon saw as wrong, even though it was a false positive, um, and then work with them to fix the fix the things in their business. That's really the most important part on any suspension type is that you actually fix what's wrong in your business. So many sellers, um, they want to they want to say, oh, it's just buyers who complain about everything. OK, well, that's true. However, um, that doesn't mean that you're doing everything perfectly. You can always run your business better and whatever you did wrong, you want to fix it because you don't want to have downtime again. That's amazing, Leslie. Uh, I think sellers selling on multiple Amazon marketplaces are especially prone to suspensions. Uh, the whole gist of this is doing thorough research and rectifying the issues related to the account. And with this, we have almost reached the end of the session. Thank you so much, Leslie, for sharing your expert tips with us. I'm sure all the sellers watching this video have got some great insights on how to maintain their account health and what are the effective ways to prevent suspension. Well, thank you so much for having me here. I just love demystifying Amazon. You know, the seller performance side can be really scary. Um, so everyone out there just know there are people you can talk to who will make it not so scary. Don't be worried if these things happen. Um, do what we've been talking about. Dive into the data in your account and look for ways to make it better instead of living in fear. Awesome. And a big thank you to our audience for being a part of this. Your support means a lot to us. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to Seller App. Do click the bell icon so that you will never miss on any other video. We are coming up with exciting podcasts every Friday, so don't forget to tune in. And happy holidays to you all.